Oh my God. <laughs> the sadness. The sadness stars Barant Zhu, Regina Lei, and is directed by Rob J. Baz. What's up, guys? It's time to review. I'd say a brand new movie, although on IMDb it says 2021, so maybe this movie kind of came out last year. I don't know. I know it's on Shutter right now. It's called The Sadness. Uh, quite a few of you guys clued me in on this movie, um, and I just saw a lot of comments about how crazy this movie is. You know, I knew nothing about it. I just knew that it was uh, kind of a zombie movie, and I know people have different opinions on what, in fact, a zombie movie is, but for the sake of this review, we're going to call this a zombie movie. Um... The contagion, I guess you could say, or the uh, affliction in this is quite different than most other zombie films. And, and I like that most zombie films have their own kind of flavor to them. I mean, you have to do something to stand out, right? But The Sadness, it's a film based out of Taiwan. I, I swear to God, when I was watching this movie, I thought that's probably a South Korean film. And it's, it's not. It's, it's from Taiwan. But it feels very much like a South Korean film. And it does not hold back at all. And I think that's part of the allure of this movie. Every now and then there's, you know, a movie that comes out that pushes the boundaries in terms of like violence and even subject matter. And boy, does this one for sure. You might even get offended by some of the stuff in this movie. It gets pretty damn crazy. And you know how we have like gateway horror movies? This is not a gateway horror movie at all, okay? If you have your, your, your Aunt Becky over... Uh, and, she, and she wants to kind of, uh, you know, dabble into horror. Don't show her the sadness, okay? She might disown you and jump out a window. But anyway, first off, let's give you a quick plot synopsis. It starts off with this young couple in bed. Nice, tender moment. You know, they're, they're going about their lives. They each have their, their jobs, their daily jobs. And, uh, you know, they're trying to climb the ladder of life and, you know, do the normal things that people do. Their names are Jim and Kat. And so pretty early on in the movie, after they split up, Jim, he sees like this, this old man just walking on a rooftop and he can definitely tell that there's something off. There's something not right. And really the, the old man with the, the long white hair, he's kind of the start of, you know, at least in terms of in the movie, the start of the crazy madness that's about to unfold. And this is one of those movies, yes, the, the epidemic has been going on, but we are in the early stages of it. And there's a lot of the population that's just finding out. You know, it's not something that's been around for, like, say, years. Now, one thing I do love about this movie is it reminds me of two of my favorite movies of the genre, 28 Days and Weeks Later. Uh, just because... This is more of a virus, and this is set in kind of the, the current modern day with the pandemic. You know, this is one of those movies that takes what's going on in the current time and kind of pumps it with steroids and shows you like the worst possible scenario. But it doesn't matter what the scenario is, you're still going to have that divide. You know, there's moments in this movie where you'll have characters young and old that have disagreements about what's going on. One thinks it's it's ridiculous. Uh, the other one thinks, hey, we need to be as safe as possible. That exists in this movie. And, and it, there are some political aspects of this, but it's for the sake of the movie. It's not something that's outside of the movie, so it's annoying. No, it fits right in with what's going on. I mean, you can go all the way back to Night of the Living Dead and the, the subject matter uh, and the strife amongst the population, even in that movie, it's all here. And I think that's when zombie movies do it the best. When they present a, like a current problem of the world and this, you know, this division amongst people has been here forever, but they don't oversaturate the movie with it. You know, it, it's part of the fabric and it almost enhances it. Now, let's rip the band-aid off. This movie is one of the most violent movies I have ever seen in my entire freaking life. It is insane how far they go and it starts off pretty quick i could i could talk about that opening scene in the diner and it's our first real encounter with the old man with the you know the long white hair and he literally rips this guy's face off and it's it's not cgi most of this movie is practical effects and it's it's glorious but i like that it still feels fresh and original i've never seen practical effects that look quite like this before and it, it's the type that is not for the squeamish, will really get under your skin. But bouncing forward, 
I would say the subway scene is easily going to be one of the most startling sequences in horror freaking history. It's that effective. It's that unsettling. It's that unapologetic. There are so many words I can use to describe this scene. And it starts off with kind of this like disagreement. You know, this older generation with the young girl from the beginning of the movie, Cat, and he pretty much sexually harasses her. But he's not having it. In his mind, he feels like he's doing nothing wrong. So, you know, he's one of these grumpy old men that uh, doesn't agree with the current landscape. But make no bones about it. He's crossing the line big time. So it starts off with this uncomfortable moment before it turns into complete chaos. Now, these particular zombies, quote unquote zombies, okay, that's what I'm calling them for the sake of this review. Don't get all upset if you don't feel like they're zombies. But I like that these zombies have different characteristics. It's kind of a cross between the regular zombies and the, the rage virus from 28 Days Later because I found the, the zombies from that movie, 28 Days Later, much scarier. Not to take anything away from the classic like Romero type zombies, it's just a different flavor. But these zombies could actually think, they could talk, and they were homicidal maniacs. That's pretty much what this contagion does. It turns you into a murderer. Flat out, plain and simple, you are a homicidal maniac. And so they attack each other, uh, the, I guess the non-affected. Like for some reason the, the zombies don't attack each other, but they attack the, the non-zombies. And they're stabbing them, they're using every weapon they, they can, but they even go as far as sexually assaulting each other. You know, there are some heavy, uncomfortable moments in this. You know, you remember the, the uh, unrated cut of Rob Zombie's Halloween when you had the, the rape scene? There's stuff like that in here. And let me just stress, it never freaking lets up throughout the entire duration of the movie. You have some quiet moments here and there, but you are quickly led right into another chaotic, violent frenzy. And sometimes you feel like you need to catch a breath. That's the type of film this is. You know, by the time you're done with this movie, you might be a little exhausted. Now, I think the pacing's really good in this too because, you know, the two main characters, they split up and we follow both of them along the way. So we bounce back and forth and they both are completely tested. So you can kind of relate this to like Train to Busan, you know, the, the, the emotional um, moments between the father and the daughter. And that's where we kind of veer into the cons because I'm comparing this to that. Uh, you had this nice loving couple but I think the movie doesn't quite send it home uh, as far as emotion goes. I would have liked to see a couple more scenes of these two trying to get to each other. But it's almost drowned out by just the insanity and the violence. And that's fine. That's what this movie is. But I think it would have been perfect if they would have kind of sent that home. But I did like these two main characters. They were very charismatic and especially Kat, you know, she has some great moments in this, especially in the last act when she's in the hospital. And she's the one that constantly has to deal with this guy, the businessman, as he's referred to, that, you know, uh, was harassing her on the subway. He becomes a, a major player throughout this movie. And he becomes, I guess, that villainous anchor, you know, something to latch on to. Uh, you, you hate this guy but he's always there throughout. And so I like that the movie does try to keep it on a personal level and you know, focusing in on our, our main characters, good and bad. You know, this is a, I guess, a national epidemic, a, probably a worldwide epidemic, and there's some of that in here. You get to see how society reacts to this epidemic throughout. But I, again, I like how it focuses in on our core characters. And I think that just makes for some uh, much more startling elements because you throw some emotion in there. So guys, this movie really stands out. I'm going to give it a high purchase worthy. Oh my God, did you hear that? We had a little bit of thunder. It's thundering right now, which is kind of cool. But yeah, definitely a high purchase worthy. Um, I'll be watching this again for sure, probably in October. Uh, but if you want a no holds barred bloodbath of a movie, you know, because sometimes we want that stuff, look no further than the sadness. It's insane. So guys, let me know your thoughts on the sadness in the comments. Looking forward to hearing them. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do Free Fall Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dumbs on my socials, support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee. You know, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and Rum Dumb out.